some of the things that we'll be talking about. The ancient petrified world. The world that existed long before the world that we know today. A world that's more like Wonderland than what we're used to seeing. A world where there were titans, giants, a world where the gods walked about and warred against the titans. A world that was terraformed and destroyed and taken over. A world where there was war between two different races. The largest of them, known as the titans, turned into rock. And they fell. Now before the rock titans fell, there was a magnificent garden paradise where everything was much bigger. Everything was fantastic and amazing and terrible to behold for us today. We had giant trees shooting up into the skies beyond the clouds reaching up into the heavens. And that world was terraformed and cut down by the titans. And then the waters were introduced into our world, the oceans as we call them, and everything turned into rock. We walk around on the rocks today, we take looks at the mountains, we see the boulders and strange rock formations all over the place. But we always take it for granted. We never second guess, we never question our uh, geography. Our geography is one of the biggest clues that we have today as to what happened in our ancient past. See, that's something that could not be stripped away from us. All of the clues and all of the evidence, the only thing that the powers that, that be could do was they had to brainwash us. They had to cast these spells so that we didn't see the things that had turned into stone. Well, I believe that the time is coming where many people around the realm are waking up. We're able to start picking up on clues. And as we pick up on one clue, we think about the implications and it leads to other clues. And we find ourselves looking around in a brand new world that was never introduced to us. We were never taught about it in schools. It was never talked about. It wasn't even known, but it was known in our collective memory, our collective subconscious. We have group amnesia as a people. Now the thing about this is we can't truly forget. Those memories are there. The way the ancient world once was is still there in our minds. And as we pick up on these clues moving forward and the truth reveals itself to us, breadcrumb after breadcrumb, then we can start to see the world that we live in with new eyes and we can see things with new insight. We're going to be talking about the world that once was, the Garden of Eden, um, our perfect place as it started off and how it turned into rock. Everything turned into stone and we're left with that today. Two classes of beings that existed in an ancient world which were the Titan race, which did exist. There were Titans a mile or more high, gigantic beings, beings that shaped our world. They, they tore it apart. How they tore it apart, I'm not entirely sure, but they were destroying it. Now, this isn't just speculation on my part. This is comparative mythology. This is comparing the records all around our realm from historical to religious to mythical. They all agree, everybody agrees, Titans existed. These gigantic monsters, these gigantic beings once existed in the garden paradise that was once our realm that we live in today. In the book of Enoch and Jubilees and things like that, when it talks about the Titan race, it says that they were consumers. They just started eating everything. Their appetite was insatiable. There were Titans and the Titan race warred against the elven race or the elves or the L or the whatever you'd like to call them, you know, 
Um, various people called them various things, but they were the supermen of old. They warred against the Titans. Now, they were giants themselves, being much bigger than we are. We would call them giants, but they were much smaller than the Titans, which were their fathers. Factions were created, and they went to war with one another. And this ended up, the, the end result of all of this, there were incredible weapons that were thought of and created in order to take out the titans i mean it's very hard to take out a titan a being the size of a mountain as you can see this mountain coming to life imagine if that were real that is our subconscious making its way into the forefront of our conscious mind everything everything was coming to a gigantic close as far as this war against the titans goes one of these weapons was to flood everything out to drown the race of beings that they were fighting against not just the titans but the gods who were on the side of the titans as well because you know it went both ways on both sides a huge flood was introduced what happened was giants titans like this guy right here they were washed over um it's not just like the you know the flood waters just slowly went up and the giants could only doggy paddle for a certain amount of time and they drowned no it's not like that have you ever seen the videos of you know the tsunamis that have hit japan and other places the devastation isn't simply large amounts of water but the debris that's mixed in with the water that washes over and pushes things around and drowns out things now that debris is simply going to be referred to here on out as mud, okay? But, like I said before, the titans of old terraformed our world. And when I say terra formed, terra means land, and then they formed the land. They cut it out, they cut it away, and we can see evidence of this everywhere. The Grand Canyon and other geographical formations were formed as quarries by the Titans. It was, uh, it's like the story of Paul Bunyan. You know, they say Paul Bunyan, who's a Titan by the way, dragged his axe along and he created the canyons and whatnot. That is our collective subconscious moving to the forefront of our mind in order to remind us, hey, your geography was created by the gods. The gods made the world that we live in today. Well, maybe they didn't make it, but they formed it. They helped to shape it into the world that we see and experience today. As a part of this ancient world that was terraformed and cut down and washed away and flooded over with that much debris mixed with the salt water after the ancient world was washed over and covered in the debris or the mud the waters receded and that what i think is a weapon in the sky or the skylight that we have today warmed everything up it basically baked everything and fossilization or petrification became permanent you can see the things in the ancient past were petrified it looks like something because it is something you know what it's not it's not some naturally occurring geographical formation because the earth you know just patterns itself and moves due to tectonic plates and erosion and wind and things of that nature there are actual things that look like stuff rocks and boulders and and all of this um geographical formations they look like actual things because many times they are actual things that have survived an ancient world that have gone through the cataclysm and have become stone they have petrified and turned into stone many people have come across the no forests on flat earth theory or no forests on earth if you're not a flat earther okay um, that basically says if you look at the mesas around the world you can see that the mesas are gigantic tree stumps. Now we call them trees, I call them silica pillars, okay? There are these ancient pillars that shot up above the clouds, reaching up into the heavens, into other realms that we can't even get to, and they were chopped down, cut down. The world was terraformed, and that evidence in the form of mesas survives today. Now something that I've come across that I see all the time are mushrooms, gigantic mushrooms. The ancient world had gigantic mushrooms. It had these huge fungus all over the place. And 
you can see hundreds and hundreds of examples of mushroom rock formations all around the world. What are the odds that all of these rocks would look exactly like mushrooms? Isn't it interesting? Because isn't it, isn't it a really interesting coincidence that these things just all happen to line up just like this? You can look at it. You can just say, that's a mushroom. I know what a mushroom looks like. In the same way you can look at something like this, don't let the fact that there's people walking around underneath it bother you or change your mind about it. That's a mushroom. You know it's a mushroom. You know what a mushroom looks like. We're all very much aware. Now here's something interesting. In Alice in Wonderland, the mushroom is also prevalent. And they say, if you eat one side, you'll grow taller. If you eat the other side, you'll grow smaller, right? You'll shrink. So we have the concept of small beings and titanic beings having something to do with the mushroom presented in Alice in Wonderland. Now another thing that I thought about too was Super Mario Brothers, right? Why is it that the creators chose to have Mario, little tiny Mario, eat a mushroom and all of a sudden he grows to gigantic size, right? These are all truths and breadcrumbs that have fallen to us from this ancient world where everything was much bigger. It was wonderful. We were in wonder. We would be in wonder if we were back in that world today. It would seem like the avatar world to us. It would seem like wonderland to us. Um, it would be terrible. It would maybe be frightening to many people, but it would be fantastic. It would be a fantasy world, which it was. This is where we get our concept of fantasy from. It's very hard to just make up things out of thin air, to just make up gibberish. Um, all of the best fiction and fantasy books and movies stem from truth. They all come from truth, and that's why we like them so much, because there's something about it that's just eating away at us, where we say, man, there's, there's just something that feels um, truthful. There's something that feels realistic about what I'm seeing here. Oh, and another thing, like the Smurfs, right? The Smurfs are the little beings, and they live in the mushrooms. They live in and amongst mushrooms. The mushrooms were their houses. Gigantic mushrooms. Now, Gargum, Gargo, uh, Gargoyle, Gargamel, the Gorgon, the giant, the titan, he comes in and he wars with the Smurfs. And there's still these giant mushrooms everywhere. And um, it's just symbolic of the world that we once lived in. So the ancient world was flooded over. It was destroyed. It was terraformed and all of that mud washed away and baked in the sun and everything in the ancient world turned into stone. As we go from revelation to revelation on this wonderful journey, let's try not to make the mistake of applying something we have learned so far to everything. For example, if I say the titans turned into stone, I can't just go and say every everything I see that stone is a titan. Pardon me. Um, the whole world was turned into stone. The whole world was fossilized and petrified. That includes any type of technology that once existed. It includes plants and animals and beings like this one right here. And it's it applies to everything. So we have to use wisdom and caution before we're too quick to say, oh, that's what that is. Oh, it's it, it's that, you know what I mean? Now, we, we let these things marinate. We let the truth marinate within us. It's good to take our time and to be patient. I know many of us are in a big fat hurry because we're so excited, you know? And that's what makes us kind of like um, children because the human race is really a bunch of babies. We're, we're babies, we're like children, you know? We don't live for very long. So can, can you blame us for getting so excited whenever we, see, whenever we come across a revelation? Man, we wanna share it with everyone. We wanna declare it from the rooftops and say, oh, I found the truth. But you'll always be finding the truth. The truth is a continual path. And we happen to be in a time where the truth, as we're picking up on it, is gaining in momentum. Like I said at the beginning of the video, people are starting to see these things all over the place. Look at that. That is a snakehead. I mean, okay, like I let me take a dose of my own medicine. Let's not be too quick, but come on. It's not just a, a rock that was formed by mud and shaped by wind and rain. Give me a break. 
And I threw that one in there just just for fun because that does look like the prior image of the luck dragon turned into rock. And this is another image, you know, the giant trees like I was talking about. Look at all the debris around it. It was cut. Something cut that. Look at that. What does that look like to you? You know, the L race devised horrific weapons and eventually decided to go ahead and destroy everything in a gigantic flood that brought about our oceans that we have today. Now, those floodwaters had all of the mud rolling around in it. The mud was covering everything, keeping things from oxidizing or having oxygen in it or whatnot, and petrifying it, turning it into stone. Petrification is a very easy process if you know, if you understand how it works. The ancient world turned into stone. It was covered in mud, it solidified, it densified, and all of those minerals that are mixed up in that mixture of the ocean water and the debris from the terraformed world, those minerals made their ways into the pores of the bodies and into the plants and into the technology and everything. And when the floodwaters receded, that what we call the sun or the skylight in our realm baked everything and solidified it even more, making the process permanent. And today we have wonderful pictures in our world, wonderful images, statues basically, all over the place that we cannot explain their existence. Why do they look so strange? Why do they look so out of place? Mainstream science can't explain it. This mud fossil theory explains it perfectly. And our world is full of things like these whales, right? Those are gigantic rocks, but look at them. They look just like whales. I mean, they may not be whales, this might not be a bird, but it, these things are not what we've been told. It's not just rocks. I mean, look at that thing. I don't know if that's a giant brain, but what I can tell you is it has no, no natural place to be there in that field. Look at this guy. This looks exactly like the Titans or the Fallen Angels on, uh, on the movie Noah. If you've ever seen the movie Noah, the recreation of the flood story, those those fallen angels, they're rock. They're made out of rock. Gee, why are they made out of rock? Oh, I don't know. Our world was petrified. It was turned into stone. It was turned into rock. And this perfectly explains the world that we see around us today. It explains perfectly all of the strange and out of place rock formations that we see around us. Um, where science fails, mythology, legends, cultures, religions, all of these stories that have been passed on to us. And that's why we do this, by the way. That's why we come up with um, fiction novels and movies that are fantasy and story form because we don't live for that long. Humans have a very short lifespan. So we've developed a way which, according to legend, was actually taught and commanded to us by the gods who were e immortal compared to us. <coughs> they told us pass these things down in story form. The stories will live on. Myths are not fiction. Myths are not lies. Myths are truth told in story form. It's my belief that we'll be able to look at the world around us and we'll be able to understand and piece together our ancient past. It will give us identity. It will give us purpose and understanding of how we came to be where we are today and why the world looks and is ran the way that it is today. It's because some of those elven race survived and they went underground and they became dark elves and they control our world today. That's a whole different video. Which it gives our lives actual meaning and purpose as to why we are here, who we are, what is the meaning of life? All of these important age old questions I've found the answers to in unraveling our esoteric past, that which has been hidden from us. But it can't be hidden for much longer because we're piecing it back together. Be sure to check out other fascinating subjects brought to you by J Dreamers.